Hi everyone, so in this video I'm going to work through example 3 um, which uh, talks about how to use uh, data and then calculate certain statistical quantities that would help us um, quantify how much error we have in precision and accuracy and then report that value as well. So we're going to start with um, question 1 here which is calculate the mean and the median for this particular data set. Okay, so you want to write this down. If you've done this already, then you can check your answers. Okay, so you want to write these numbers down and then see uh, how I uh, do it in the next uh, slide. Okay, so let's start by uh, calculating the mean. So I just wrote down the data here at the top and uh, the first thing you can do uh, is just calculating the mean and the mean, remember, is fairly straightforward. It's basically just a sum of all of these numbers divided by the number of measurements you have. So in this case you have, um, and the, the formula for the mean, by the way, is written this way usually, is the sum of all individual measurement divided by n, where n represents the total number of measurements that you have, okay? So in this case, you would write 10.03 uh, is the first one. I'm going to dispense with the units right now just to save space here, but you should use the units when you're making this uh, calculation. Of course, uh, 9.99 and then 10.03 is the next one and then 9.98 is the uh, fourth one, and then all of these numbers divided by four would give you the answer to the mean. Now, if you do this on a calculator, the calculated answer would be 10.0075 uh, grams, but again, this has the same issue that we talked about in the previous video, which is you can't have that many sig figs, right? And remember, you're doing addition here. So then what you want to do is keep track of the number of decimals you have. The one with the least number of decimals would be determining how, much your, uh, how many decimals you're going to have in your final answer. Now, all of these numbers have two decimals, so then your final answer should also have two decimals. So in this case, the answer would be 10.01 grams. Notice that the number 4 here is not part of determining the um, uh, significant figures, the number of sig figs, because 4 is actually just the number of trials and we know it's what we call an exact number because we know for sure there are 4 measurements. We're not measuring the number of measurements. We know there are 4 measurements total, 4 trials. Okay, So 4 doesn't go into determining how many sig figs you have, only these top numbers here. And because you're doing addition, you're looking at the um, number of decimals. The median is uh, can also be determined. It's fairly uh, straightforward to do it. First things you need to do, remember, is to order these four numbers from large uh, from small to large. So then, this would be number the smallest number, nine 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 point nine eight. This is the second number, nine point nine nine, and then the last two are the same, ten point oh three and ten point oh three. So the middle two numbers end up being these two guys, right? If you figure that out. And so since there's four measurements, the median then would be the average of these two middle numbers, okay? So it'll just be 9.99 plus 10.03 divided by 2 will give you your median. And if you notice, uh, if you were to do that, what you get is 10.01 as well, okay? And you notice in this case the median and the mean have the same values. This is typical if you have a fairly uh, good uh, data set, meaning that's something that's distributed like a like a bell curve, uh, like a you know like a normal distribution. So the mean and the median should be the same. However, if you have a data set where you have outliers, let's say instead of uh, these four numbers, you have the same three numbers here, but then this number was 15.22 or something like that. Then you have a, you know, fairly huge outlier there. So what you can do there is if you calculate the mean and the median, the mean and the median will not be the same number. The median will still be this number, but the mean would be skewed upwards uh, to, to the larger number than 10.01. Same thing if, let's say, you have these three numbers and then the fourth number is really small, maybe 5.21 or something like that, then um, that's the mean, mean would be skewed downwards whereas the median would have the same value, okay? So um, that's how we calculate mean and median. Now we want to do uh, show how to calculate the standard deviation. And for the standard deviation, um, really, it's just uh, the reason we need standard deviation is because we're going to calculate this percent error later on. So one of the things you want to do is just, you know, figure out how to calculate the standard deviation here. And the standard deviation is not difficult. It's really just plugging into that formula that I talked about 
uh, in a couple of videos ago. So let me just uh, show it to you how to do this. So the standard deviation basically in this case would be um, the difference between each of this number with the mean. So you're going to take 10.03 minus 10.01, okay? That's the first one. You're going to square that. And then you're going to add to that the difference of the second measurement, which is 9.99 minus 10.01, okay? And then you're going to do the third measurement, which is uh, another 10.0, and don't forget to square this, 10.03 minus 10.01. Uh, I'm sorry with the writing here. Um, just can't find a better uh, pen to write this with at this point. Uh, and then the last one is 9.98 plus 10 point, I mean, I'm sorry, minus 10.01, uh, okay? And square that as well. And then what you do is you take all of these numbers, right, the square of the sum of all of these and divide it by the number of uh, trials that you have, which is 4, okay, and then minus 1. So in other words, you're dividing by 3. And then after you get all of those calculations, you then do a square root of the numbers that you get, okay. If you do this correctly, you should get the following as your standard deviation. So it should be 0.0263 uh, grams. Now this is the calculated answer, okay? So this is what I get uh, from the calculator. I could have more numbers here, uh, but I'm just going to write these numbers for now, okay? All right, and then let's go to the next question now. So you notice that the last question asks for percent error in precision and accuracy. And what you have to do is then, again, look back at the formula for this. Uh, I'm going to write it in the uh, scratch paper in the next and solve it for you. Okay, but you're going to need your uh, standard deviation that you just calculated. You're going to need your mean uh, as well as the um, true value, which is uh, 10 in this case. Okay, so just a reminder that if you want to calculate the percent error in precision, okay, percent error in precision, what you have to do is uh, show what is the standard deviation relative to the mean times 100%. Again, this formula should make sense to you because it's telling you how big of a spread the standard deviation is with respect to the mean. Okay, so again, the bigger this value is, that means the more um, spread apart your data is, the more, vari uh, the more variable your data is, which is the less precise it is. Okay, so that number, the error would then be a bigger number. Okay, now in the uh, calculation that we just did, the standard deviation is 0 0.0263. Okay, but really in this case we want to compare it to the same uh, uh, decimal as the mean, and remember the mean that we calculated was 10.01 grams, right? So in order for that 0.0, I'm just going to write this on the side here, 0 0.0263 grams is the standard deviation, but to make it the same uh, decimal like the mean, you're going to just write 0 0.03 grams and times 100%. So in this case, your error is 0.3%, okay? So Hopefully that's what you got if you did it ahead of, of me. The other way to do, uh, the other calculation we have to do is percent error in accuracy. And in this case, you're trying to assess how close your mean is to the true value. Now, why do we use the mean instead of each individual value? That's a common practice because you're repeating your experiment a bunch of times. So you're just going to take the average as a representative of all the different uh, individual data points that you have. So your mean is 10.01 uh, and then you're going to subtract that from the true value which happens to be 10.00 grams and remember that divided it, divide that by the true value itself which is 10.00 grams and then multiply that by 100% should give you your percent error in accuracy and what you should get there is 0.1 percent as the percent error in accuracy. Okay. Okay, so the last thing I want to mention is just how you report these values. Remember that when you report values, you are um, writing this in terms of mean plus minus standard deviation. Okay, so that's what I mean by reporting. Now the mean itself is 
0.01 grams and then plus minus the standard deviation and again I want to remind you that the calculated answer for the standard deviation earlier was 0.0263 uh, okay so then again to have this at the same you have to have the same decimals or it doesn't make sense again remember the concept we talked about in the previous video so this would just be written as 0.03 grams as your standard deviation and that's the number you would write uh, on a piece of paper or in, your, in, in the publication you're submitting uh, to tell people that that's the spread of the data, the error with respect to the mean. Okay.